Python is very helpful in developing extremely functional and complex programs. However, in a script form, their usability is limited to only those who understand the language. For instance, here's a simple script for generating a sine curve for a given amplitude and frequency. Even though most users understand the sine curve from their high school, those who are not familiar with Python scripting may not be able to use it. However, when we present the same program as a web app that has an interactive interface, its usability is scalable to all those who understand the sine curve. While a sine curve is a simple example, the issue of usability becomes more prominent as the complexity of the programs increase. Due to this reason, a web app is a very attractive solution for scalability and usability of a complex Python program massively. In this video, we will teach how to build web apps around Python scripts using flasks as our choice of web framework. We will use the example of sine curve to demonstrate the development of web app, but these principles are easily extended to any complex program. Let's get started. Web apps allow users to access data using programs installed and executed on remote servers from another device via internet. Web apps are interactive in nature, so this feature differentiates a web app from a website. One important point to keep in mind is that a web app is not just one piece of code, but it is a combination of several of them. This includes an HTML or CSS page for the front end, a functioning Python script in the back end, and a web framework that enables the communication between the front end and back end. You will find a self explanatory HTML file with appropriate comments in this attachment. But the focus of this video would be on how to establish a connection between existing Python script with a web framework. Flask is a web application framework written in Python. Its lightweight nature has minimal dependency on external libraries, resulting in faster yet scalable choice of web framework. Flask is simple to understand, which is best suited for beginners. Web apps are hosted on servers, and Flask as the web framework uses WSGI, Web Server Gateway Interface, as a standard to communicate between the server and web app. In other words, WSGI is a way for the web servers to pass requests to web applications or frameworks. Flask uses Jinja 2 template engine, which is designed to have a list of inputs. Upon execution of the web app, this web template system requests input values from the user, integrates with the data source, and renders the output information. Workshop demo. Download the provided VS Code attachment and extract it to a folder on your local system. Install Python if it is not already present on your machine. Use version 3.6 or newer. On the terminal, install pip and create a new project working directory. Using virtual environments, allow the dependencies of each project to be isolated from each other. This is done by entering pip install virtual env on the terminal. Let us create a new virtual environment called web app by entering virtual env web app on the terminal. We can see a new folder with the name web app is created on your working directory. Now let us activate this virtual environment to have a clean slate ready to run this web app. This is done by entering dot backslash web app backslash scripts backslash activate on the terminal. On the problems tab, we see that some modules are missing. This will be resolved as we install the requirements. Next, 
we install Flask using pip install Flask. Upon successful installation of Flask, successfully installed message is displayed on the terminal. On the other hand, you could enter pip install hyphen r dot backslash requirements dot text. This will make the system to automatically read the dependencies documented on the file requirements.txt and start installing one by one. Now our working environment is fully ready to run our web app. Let's open the sign curve folder. It has a python source file called app, a readme file, a requirements text file and a couple of folders, static and templates namely. Both static and template folders have HTML web page creation files that are used for building the front end or the UI of the web app. Open the app.py file on the current workspace. This is the main python source file that has all the necessary libraries and programming logic for the backend functioning of our web app. This python file is divided into four sections. The first is where we mention all the dependencies and import them. The second section has a sign curve programming logic. Then we declare our Flask app and towards the end we define query handling logic. In the first section of our python file, we import Flask web framework along with a request and render template. Render template function points out to an actual HTML file home.html that has our actual website. Whereas post request is one of the HTTP methods that allows a user to send HTML form data to the server. We import two libraries numpy and matplotlib to build and plot the trigonometric sign function. In the second section we create a function sign curve with two parameters amplitude and frequency. Using the if logic, we check if these variables are numeric. If any of these variables are not numeric, we throw an error by directly assigning the result with a string that says, please enter a valid number for amplitude and frequency. If the values are numeric, we go ahead with this logic by declaring both variables as float and build the sine curve for the function. y equal to amplitude product sine of frequency product x. This sine curve plot is saved as sign1.jpg under the folder static. Static files like images, CSS goes under the directory static whereas the HTML files go out under the directory templates. Both these directories work hand in hand. The URL for the static file is grab and the actual specific file name is referenced inside the HTML file. In the next section, we will define our app. We simply call it app and finally, we will define the two routes, home and predict. The at app.root within parentheses backslash decorator allows us to write a function that returns the information that will be shown on the website for a specific route. So a decorator takes in a function, it adds some functionality and it returns it. So the at symbol is used along with the name of the decorator function and it is placed above the definition of the function to be decorated. This is a syntactic sugar to implement decorators. The first root home is displayed to the user who opens this web app for the first time. So this function is written with home.html to the user as a home page. The second root is predict. Here the parameters which are passed on the front end are fed to the function sitting in the backend. 
so the amplitude and frequency variables are assigned then the function sine curve is called on to these two values and the result we get from this function is shown on the same home.html page so we get the sine curve plot for the corresponding amplitude and frequency values we also have the prediction text updated with result string for error handling python files can act as either reusable modules or as standalone programs here if double underscore name double underscore double equal to double underscore main double underscore so this implies that the module is being run standalone if you import the script as a module in another script the double underscore name double underscore is set to the name of the script or module the debugger is set to active with app.run debug equal to true so the user can change the files on the fly without having to stop or start the flask service now let us look at the front end home.html page which is located under the templates directory in our workspace the home.html page has a heading sine curve an image depicting the sine function being used three placeholders the calculated sine plot and a prediction text here the three placeholders that are used for creating fields such as enter the amplitude enter the frequency and calculate now we are all set to run our web app on the terminal enter python app.py the server returns an url for our web app press control and click on the url generated here we go our web app is live let us test this web app by providing amplitude and frequency values we get a sine curve for the corresponding numeric values now let us enter a non numeric input on the fields and hit calculate we get a warning that says please enter a valid number for amplitude and frequency so this confirms that our web app is fully functional having learned how to create a simple web app you are now ready to create one of your own if you are interested in learning how web apps help the simulation community i recommend you to watch the other videos in this course this concludes the video happy learning